Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Gordon Conwell Partnership Program webinar. We're so glad you could be with us. Thanks for joining us. My name is Carl Wacker, and I'm a part of our admissions office here at Gordon Conwell. Uh, so I'll be helping to moderate and uh, lead our PowerPoint and our discussion today. Um, I'm also joined by Erica Givanello, the director of the partnership program. How's it going, Erica? Good, good. How are you? Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Great. And as well as Courtney Veridi, uh, who is a current student and also a participant in the partnership program currently. How's it going, good. Courtney? Good, thanks. <laughs> awesome, good. Glad to be here. Well, thanks for being here, both of you. And again, thank you to all of us, uh, all of you for joining us. Um, I hope the presentation today is engaging and helpful, and hopefully you'll have a chance to ask any questions that you have as well. So on that note, uh, we're going to be using the Zoom platform, which hopefully you've been able to get set up okay. And uh, at the bottom of your screen, if you're on a, a desktop or a phone, there's a chat feature. So as we jump into the PowerPoint and as Courtney shares, and you have any questions, feel free to start putting those in the chat box. And then at the end, when we get to the Q&A, We'll try to get to those as many as we can. Uh, so that's how you can uh, interact with us during the presentation. Uh, that being said, I think we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to pass it over to Erica, who's going to make some opening comments and lead us through a brief PowerPoint. Take it away, Erica. Great. Thanks. You're Thanks. Welcome. And again, welcome, everyone. So many of you are considering um, seminary at this point. Some of you perhaps have already made the leap and applied and gotten accepted. So now the next part starts. How do you pay for seminary? Oh my goodness, it's so overwhelming. Well, the partnership program does assist with that. So it is a full tuition scholarship, which is such a blessing, but it gives you so much more than that. It's yes, full tuition, but it also enables you to be building and maintaining relationships that last a lifetime in ministry. It assists you with learning not just your theological education, but also equipping you and being well-versed in biblical stewardship, personal finance, church budgeting, um, just understanding the world of financial matters just a little bit better and hopefully equipping you so that as you go out into the world, into the future ministry that God has called you to, that you will be well equipped completely theologically as well as through stewardship so um, and having that prayer support network surrounding you is just such a blessing it's such a gift mm -hmm. so um, so we're here to share with you how to do all that so um, welcome again and without further ado we're gonna dive right in and just so you know it's just gonna be here on this side but okay the great um, but they'll see it on their screen okay so so the partnership program, I view the partnership program as a triangle and each leg of that triangle represents a different entity. So the first leg of the triangle is you, the student, and there's lots of obvious bonuses for you. I've just mentioned several, full tuition, building and maintaining relationships that last a lifetime in ministry, learning practical skill sets that you'll take forth with you as you go into ministry, as well as the biblical stewardship education. And when I say the word education in classes, please know I practice what I preach. I am going to be a good steward of your time because once you become a student, that is one of your most valuable possessions. So the word class and course in the partnership realm is not what a Gordon Conwell three credit course would be. It's simply a few hours in an entire semester. So please don't feel like it's daunting in any way. So those are the benefits for the student. The next leg is the church. So the church is benefiting from the partnership program in two primary areas. Number one, they're receiving um, church leaders who are well versed in mm -hmm. biblical stewardship. Mm -hmm not something that's typically focused on in a theological education. And the church is also receiving these students and this education prior to the student ever even graduating. So as you're taking some of these stewardship classes, the hope is that you as a partnership student would bring it back to your church now while you're a student so that they too are understanding the world of stewardship a little bit more wisely. And then another one that kind of couples in with that, the church is benefiting from obtaining um, well-versed um, stewardship leaders and not just 
the church as in those who are leading the church, but the church as a whole, wherever it is that God is calling you towards. So that's the second leg. The third leg is donors. Well, how on earth could this bless donors, Erica? I can tell you story upon story about how this blesses donors. Mm -hmm. They are standing alongside you, praying for you, lifting you up in ministry. They are literally confirming the call that God has mm -hmm. placed upon your heart and upon your life. So please don't ever underestimate the powerful ways that donors are being blessed by all of this because they are being blessed. This is an opportunity that you are providing them to be able to share in your world while you're at seminary. So, and you're learning how to do all of this in a safe environment. I'm here to help you attain your goals. You're not learning how to do this on your own. So please know we're here to support one another. We're here to help you attain your goals. So that is my triangle. Um, clearly, how does it all work? So yes, you're gonna start learning how to fundraise. Daunting, I know, but it's not really. It's an invitation. Mm -hmm. You're inviting partners to stand alongside you. You are the Moses and they are the Aaron's holding up your arms in ministry, praying for you, lifting you up when you're feeling perhaps homesick or discouraged or overwhelmed with workload. They are your errands. So don't underestimate that. The way that it works is this is a guideline. So I'm just providing you with recommendations. Doesn't mean that I have students that have this exact scenario. In fact, I don't have one student with this exact scenario. But the hope is that you're gaining towards um, 13 donors at $75 per month plus one church at $2,000 annually. When you add all that together, it equates to $13,700 that you're raising annually. How you get to that goal is literally how the Lord is moving in the hearts and lives of others. I'm just providing you with an example. Not one person is going to give you that exact scenario. They may want to give you far more than $75 per month. They may not be able to give you $75 per month. Some want to give one-time donations. Some want to give annually, quarterly. Some might want to give all three years up front. Whatever works for them works for us. Similarly, the church, yes, we're throwing out there $2,000. That's a suggestion. You may find that your church is able to provide you with far more than that. That's a woohoo, raise the roof moment. That means you have a major donor. Count your blessings. That's a gift but you may also be in a church that's a church plant and they may not be able to provide you with any financial benefits, but that's okay because they will be your prayer warriors. And that is far more important in the, in those situations. So, so please know the bottom line is that 13, seven and how you get to that literally is how God is moving in the hearts and lives of others. Mm -hmm. So, um, would this one be helpful or, or uh, um, what will I learn? We kind of covered that. Maybe the what will I learn? I'm sorry, I'm not following the, the, the things that, okay. I, uh, <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> that I assembled. No, sorry. That's okay. I should have printed it for you. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> Um, so some of the things that you will learn through the partnership program, I've already covered some of them. So clearly you'll be learning practical, practical skill sets that last a lifetime in ministry. Learning how to fundraise, learning how to talk about finance is a very important part of your education within the context of the partnership program. The biblical stewardship principles are very important. Jesus spoke about money very often in the Bible. Um, so our hope is that you will be well versed in that. And then the biblical principles of stewardship, our hope is that you'll be gaining wisdom and insight into the biblical, historical, theological viewpoints of stewardship. And as I shared earlier, as well as personal finance and um, church um, budgeting. There's so much more to that as well. Um, I'm just trying to give you a small little synopsis of what you'll be learning. Um, but any one of these courses could be a whole semester long. So we're just providing you with information, if you will, so that you know, gee, when I am no longer at seminary, I'm going to need insurance. Now, what did they talk about about insurance? Mm -hmm. Just little things that at least you'll be aware of some of the needs that you may have moving forward. So that's our hope with that. 
um, and then clearly building and maintaining those relationships that last a lifetime in ministry. I cannot underestimate the power of that one um, bullet. It's just, it's such a gift knowing that you're coming to seminary mm -hmm. with a team standing alongside you. You're not coming to seminary alone. Mm -hmm. You're coming with that support network who is praying for you and loving on you in very meaningful ways. So, um, so who can apply? Oh, we already covered that. Uh, can I jump in? Sure. So the first thing I want to mention is, um, well, actually, who can, who can apply is probably a better first question. Okay. And so, then I'll talk about the admission side, and then you can talk about the application to the partnership program side. Okay, perfect. So who can apply? Um, the partnership program, anyone who is pursuing a master's degree program or doctor of ministry program can apply at any of our campuses. Um, it looks different for um, different students at different campuses. I'm assuming we're talking mostly about Hamilton That's students right. here. Okay, so um, so if you are considering the DEMON program, raise the roof. You can stay in the partnership program if you're pursuing your MDiv and your THM and mm -hmm. hoping to go on to your DMEN. Um, you can do all that. A frequent question I'm asked is, well, gee, Erica, I'd like to add the THM, but it says everywhere on the website that I can't do that. Yes, you can. If you are a current partnership program student pursuing your MDiv degree program and you would like to continue on with your THM, you can stay in the partnership program. The only reason a THM degree is excluded is because it's a one-year degree program and you would not fulfill all of the educational components that are required in the partnership program. So, um, so that's the degree programs. You also must be a US citizen or green card holder um, to be able to apply for the partnership program. So um, application due date is April 15th, but don't let that stop you. Um, if you're really, really, if your heart's desire is to pursue the partnership program, please send me an email, let's talk. I'm happy to open up um, application due dates um, to extend that for you if you feel as though it's something that's attainable for you. So the next step, if you haven't done so already, would be to open a general Gordon Conwell application. Uh, you can go right on our website, gordonconwell.edu. Uh, you can also use that URL slash apply and get straight to the application page. Uh, then there's a separate application for the partnership program. Mm -hmm. And we're about to jump in and let Courtney share a little bit, but I would like to also preface that by saying that Erica and the admissions team and the rest of our partnership team we're all very willing and uh, available to try to visit with you about your particular circumstance. Mm -hmm. So Erica's contact information is here, and uh, you can also email our general admissions office at admissions at gordonconwell.edu. Uh, no commitment, but if you're interested and you wanna learn more, we would be happy to set up uh, a phone call or a conversation with you. So um, at this time, I'm gonna take us off of screen share once again. And uh, Courtney, thank you for being so patient as we yeah. shared the nitty gritty details. Um, because you're a current student, I would love for you to just share a little bit about your experience because it wasn't that long ago that you were sitting right where mm. some of our prospective students were sitting. So can you just take us through what the process was like and then now what the partnership program has meant to you? Absolutely. Hi guys, so I am a first year student here at Gordon-Conwell and prior to coming to seminary, I was on staff at a church doing youth ministry for two years. And when I was there, I, um, my pastor is a graduate of Gordon-Conwell and reached out to us about doing a summer class up here. Um, so I came up, I did a week long summer intensive and fell in love with seminary <laughs> um, and ended up applying in, in the summer to come to Gordon-Conwell. So I was, I had missed the deadline for merit-based scholarships. It was, it was kind of a, a later in the process decision. And so it was clear to me that I felt called to seminary, that I loved Gordon-Conwell and wanted to come here. But the big question was, how do I pay for it? And it was expensive, scholarships were an option. And so people kept on telling me to look into the partnership program. And I was like, no, I, I'm not interested in that. I don't wanna raise support. I don't wanna do that, not interested. And it came to the point where I said, okay, this is the option. Like this is the way I could go to seminary this year. And so I talked to Erica on the phone <laughs> and within that conversation, my perspective was radically shifted, radically shifted. And I realized 
one, this was the option, so I didn't really have a whole lot of choices, <laughs> but two, that um, it's a really beautiful way to do seminary. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the American culture, we are very individualistic, mm -hmm. and we think that we have to just like do everything by ourselves, earn it, Etc. But the partnership program invites us into this collective experience of doing seminary together. I remember someone once challenged me and said, in terms of receiving support, do you really believe that it is more blessed to give than to receive? If you do, that changes your whole perspective on support raising. If you believe that it will be a blessing mm -hmm. to those people who are supporting you in ministry. Mm -hmm. So talked to Erica, I was like, all right, let's do this. Started raising support over the summer before, um, coming to seminary in the fall and was completely support raised in two months, which is, was just God's grace in mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. People from my church heard I was going to seminary and literally came up to me and said, seminary is expensive. How are you going to pay for that? Can we help you? It was incredible to mm -hmm. see the body of Christ and unexpected people kind of coming out of the woodwork, wanting to support me in my call. And this semester, this fall, there were seasons when Hebrew got really hard. Um, and knowing that there were people who believed in my call to be here gave me so much courage. It was an encouragement, right? Like their, their presence, their, you know, emails and messages gave me courage to move forward when it was hard. Um, and even the things of sending out blogs. So as a partnership program person, you send out a monthly update to your partners each month. And that has been a really neat process of reflecting on, okay, what has God been doing? What have I been learning? What's been going on? And then inviting those people to pray for you, to partner with you. So it's interesting because I did not want to do the partnership program. Like many of you guys, I might have had, I had hesitations. I had like, this is weird. What, what is going on? But the reaction I've had from partners has been so positive and that they're excited to partner with me. They are wanting to give, wanting to be a part of this journey. Um, and it's been a blessing to me as well to have that team of people. It really feels like a team. Right. Like when Erica says that, it feels like these people are with me, they're for me. I'm not doing seminary alone because of these partners. So it's been amazing, a huge blessing, unexpected, unexpected blessing. Um, but I'm so, so grateful for it. Thanks, Courtney. That's really helpful. Yeah, that is good. I appreciate Amen. you sharing. Amen. Um, Erica, one of the aspects I think that's important about the partnership program is um, that the donations are tax deductible. Mm -hmm. Can you just mm -hmm. briefly comment on that and how that yes. you know, really helps to bolster the, the program? Sure. So, yes, it is true. All gifts coming to the partnership program are tax deductible. And the reason that they're tax deductible is because, A, we have a private letter ruling here at Gordon Conwell enabling us to do this legally in the eyes of the IRS. So all gifts that come into the partnership program are actually gifts to Gordon Conwell. It's not a direct gift to you. It's a gift to Gordon Conwell and to the partnership program. So it goes into a larger scholarship bucket of which you would be a recipient. So they are tax deductible because of that. If it were a gift directly to you, it would be viewed in the eyes of the IRS as a payment on a bill. And that's not what this is. So that's the first reason why it's tax deductible. Another reason, secondary reason, is that um, you are doing all of the educational components. So there are requirements for you to um, be an active partnership program student. And it's not meant to be a burden, it's meant to help you understand um, how to raise a support team um, and build and maintain those relationships while also learning biblical stewardship principles. So that's the primary reason why it is a tax deductible gift. So um, should ever anyone inquire, that is why. Great. Thanks, Erica. Thank you. Um, and, you know, something else I just wanted to share here. Uh, one moment here while I just close out of this. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> I think one of the um, really central aspects of the partnership program is I think it can help to round out your preparation for ministry. Mm -hmm. Because seminary is about preparing you and equipping you for a lifetime of ministry. And let me tell you, it's not very likely on your own initiative that you're going to get this fundraising training mm -hmm. if you just take out student loans or just rely on outside scholarships. But as soon as you get out into the work of ministry, mm -hmm. whether you're a pastor or a professor or mm -hmm. in a parachurch organization, mm -hmm. fundraising is going to be a central component yeah. to God's ability to really use you 
to bless the church and serve the world. And so this would be just another aspect of filling out your preparation for ministry. And that's just something that I, I thought would be helpful to, to share as my own mm-hmm. apologetic. So awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so at this time, I want to try to shift gears into any questions that you might have. Uh, there was a few of you that submitted questions ahead of time. So we're going to start with some of those. Uh, but as we get into it, if you have any questions at all, feel free in the chat box to put those in. And then we'll try to get to those um, as quickly as we can and get to as many as we can in the time that we have remaining. Um, so two of the questions that came up specifically, Erica, were about the D-Min, the Doctor of Ministry program. Um, how d- does the specifics of what you've shared earlier change, if at all, if the, the applicant is interested in doing a Doctor of Ministry here? So all of the educational components for the DMIN remains exactly the same, regardless of which degree program you're pursuing. The only difference with the DMIN is that your fundraising goals will be li- a little less. So instead of 13 donors at 75, you would be raising um, five donors at 75 plus one church at 1,000 annually. So the overall fundraising goal for DMIN students is $5,500 annually. And now if you're wondering why the difference, it's mostly because tuition for DMIN is far less than tuition um, for um, for um, master degree programs. So um, it, it is primarily based on, on that. So um, if you're interested in the DMIN program, everything is done online. So if you're concerned that, oh my goodness, I'm going to be remote, how am I going to be able to do that? I live in Indiana or California. Um, everything is done online. You don't have to physically be present for anything. So please know it is attainable. If you're Um, If you have different circumstances and would like to chat with me, I'm more than happy to walk through your individual um, circumstances as well. Great. Uh, Thanks, Erica. And I think a related question, one of the questions was, how does the program work if someone's interested in studying part-time? Yep. So if you're interested in part-time studies, um, you can apply for the partnership program as well. Whether you're full-time, part-time, unfortunately, all the goals remain the same. So if you are considering part-time, I would prefer speaking with you one-off because I would want to walk through your your financials to make sure it's in the best interest for you Mm -hmm. to pursue the partnership program versus um, other options. Um, And I would still assist you wisely in knowing what the best scenario would be. Um, Perhaps your church can give to you individually. Um, There's many other options and I would be more than happy to walk through those with you if you're considering part-time. Now, part-time can also be considered two classes each semester. And if that's the case, you're actually full-time in the eyes of the partnership program. So so please know that um, there's lots of options if you're considering not taking a full course load full course load being seven credit hours in the fall, seven credit hours in the spring. If you're not considering that that workload, please reach out to me and I'll make sure that um, we come up with a scenario that's um, in your best interest. It may not be the partnership program, but it might be the partnership program. Right. And actually to underscore the part-time nature, um, from an admission standpoint, we've recently announced we're offering a new part-time scholarship of $525 off each three credit course that you would take. Whether you're online as a Simlink student or here residentially, uh, you could qualify for that trustee scholarship. Um, So if for some reason you're not able to start the partnership program yet and you want to start part-time, maybe online or on Simlink, Mm -hmm. you could use that as a baseline. Uh, And that actually touches on one of the questions we just received. Uh, There are two related questions. Uh, One was, uh, what are the deadlines for the partnership program for future semesters, Mm -hmm. like let's say spring or fall of 2020? And then would it be possible to enroll, take some classes, and then go on to the partnership program later, Mm -hmm. or do you have to commit at the very beginning for your your whole time? So could you speak to those two questions? Sure. So I'll take the second one first. Um, You can apply to the partnership program at any point in time. So if you start taking classes and then want to join the partnership program, perhaps you're only taking one or two classes for your first year because you're trying to wind down in your 
your work or wherever um, and moving here to campus. And then you apply for the partnership program, completely fine. The only requirement is that you have at least 1.5 to two years remaining in your studies. And the main reasoning behind that is so that you fulfill all of the educational components of the partnership program. In regards to the first question, due dates, um, the due dates for the partnership program for the Hamilton campus are April 15th for the fall semester, September 15th for the spring semester. If you find that you're a few days after that, you know, again, no worries. Um, there's about a weak cushion factor in there. And if it's much beyond that, just shoot me an email. I will jump through hoops to try and make it um, ready and open and available for you. And I can make that promise. So keep my email address, email me directly. I will work with you to um, try and make that happen for you. Can't guarantee it will happen, but I will definitely do my best to um, make that work for you. Right, and when you apply to Gordon-Conwell and to the partnership program, you can select which term you're hoping to start, mm -hmm. and those mm -hmm. are options uh, for you in, in the application process. Yeah. Um, another question that I think is a great question is uh, this person asked, uh, what if for some reason we don't meet our fundraising goal of 13,700? Uh, what would happen in that situation? Great question. There's this beautiful thing called grace, and God gave it to us <laughs> long before we ever extended that out to someone. So Amen. I'm looking to make sure that you are learning the basics of the partnership program and financial stewardship. Are you doing your best to attain your goals and you're just a little short? That's okay. Let's continue building that support over the remainder of the next semester. Um, but it is a beautiful thing called grace. Now, if you tell me, Erica, I am not going to try and make any phone calls. I'm not going to um, go out and visit with anyone and I'm not sending any letters, then my answer would be different. Then I would say, perhaps this isn't the best scholarship for you. And I would try and get you into a different scholarship that would still be available and would fit, be a better fit for you. Um, another scenario that wouldn't work, and, um, and this would go for all scenarios, is if you have one or two donors and one or two donors only, even if they gave you the full amount, the full 13.7, I would still say, this may not be the right scholarship for you. And why would I say that? Because it defeats the educational components of the partnership program. Mm. Understanding that a broad base is a stable base is so important. Now, please don't mishear that. I'm not saying that having a major donor is unacceptable. Yes, you can have major donors and raise the roof if you have one because all organizations have major mm. donors. Gordon Conwell has them. Everyone has major donors. But I just spoke with a student yesterday, actually, um, who was a missionary, and all of his support was coming in through one donor. And guess what? He had to come home from the mission field because mm -hmm. he lost the support of that one donor. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I am trying to help you understand why it's important to have that broad base. So, um, but always remembering there's this beautiful thing called grace. So. Um, as long as you're doing your best, um, I can assure you, um, A, that you would most likely attain your goals. I've seen students who struggle in the beginning and then far supersede their goals over the context of the time. That is awesome. Those are the beautiful moments that I love seeing. And then there's the other students who supersede their goals in the beginning and then come down and are struggling because they're not maintaining mm. the relationships. That one I don't like seeing. That means they're not being good steward of those relationships that God has put in their hearts and lives. So I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, um, you have my contact information or type in another follow-up question. A uh, couple more questions from the questions submitted ahead of time. Uh, one had to do with the situation where someone would be coming with their spouse and they both want to be full-time Gordon-Conwell students mm -hmm. and per potentially participate in the partnership program. Mm -hmm. So in that kind of a situation, would they have a combined partnership account or separate partnership accounts? You know, how would their goals change? And mm -hmm. if, let's say, they had a donor who wanted to give, 
would they give to them as a couple or would they give two checks to them individually? You know, can you just speak to that? Sure. Great question. So we have a lot of married couples. I shouldn't say a ton, but definitely some married couples in the partnership program. And they're both raising support simultaneously. We try to make it as easy as possible for the partners who are giving. So they would give one check and just two designations for that check. And we ju would just multiply that by two, half going here, half going there. The donor may have a relationship with just one of the spouses and not with the other. I have seen that as well. So wherever the donor intends to give, it's based on donor intent. Where they would like to give, that's where it goes. But for married couples, they are both responsible to do all of the educational components and then the fundraising, however the donor would like to um, fulfill that goal. Um, we do make it as easy as possible. Yeah, yeah. Great. Great question. Yeah, and the second question I think I can address briefly. Um, an important thing to mention is uh, just like our merit scholarships and our GRAM, uh, when you receive your financial aid package, you have to choose one scholarship as your primary scholarship mm -hmm. and you can't combine Gordon-Conwell scholarships. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you are on the gram or you're on a merit scholarship and then you decide you wanna go with the partnership, you would choose whichever program you felt like God was calling you to, but you couldn't continue to do both mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the awards are not combinable. Mm -hmm. The only exception to that is we do have one program called the Pierce Fellowship Program and the Pierce program actually has the same deadline for application as the partnership program, April 15th. You can find out more information on our website, uh, but essentially the Pierce program allows you, if you're accepted into the program as a leader, to start a soul care group on campus. And so these would be groups that would meet once a week or once every other week to do soul care and bond together and pray for one another as they walk through seminary. And you would be tasked with leading one of those groups uh, if you're accepted into the program, there's a $1,500 stipend annually that you would receive, and that's the one scholarship that is combinable with other awards from Gordon Conwell. Mm -hmm. uh, but aside from that, you would have to choose uh, which one. Um, however, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to, you can apply to the partnership program, and then at a later date, you can choose whether or not to go through with it or to accept a previous award that's been given to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just wanted to clarify that. Then with respect to the particular question, if you're receiving an outside scholarship that's going directly to your student account, uh, that would be eligible to be used to pay for your books, uh, fees that you have, or potentially even your on-campus housing. Um, so if you're receiving a scholarship not from Gordon-Conwell, but from somewhere else, non-institutional, uh, that could be applied uh, to any of those other um, areas that I mentioned. So good question. Anything that you would add or supplement to that, Erica? There is. If it's an outside scholarship, first of all, Pierce um, scholarship, woohoo, raise the roof, apply, apply, apply. It's a perfect fit for the partnership program. Um, so I agree wholeheartedly with you. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, if you are receiving an outside scholarship, be cautious of how it's phrased. If it's stating that that scholarship is for tuition and tuition only, Please remember, partnership is tuition only. Partnership mm. is only tuition. If, if you have two scholarships that both need to be applied to tuition only, um, there's going to be an issue. Mm. If, however, it says tuition and educational expenses, yes, you can accept that one. And that would then go for, as you shared, Carl, right. um, educational costs, which are books, fees, um, anything that would be considered education. However, housing would not be considered an educational cost. Um, so just being aware of that. I see two questions that were typed in up here. One asks if I'm looking at GPA for the partnership program. No, I am not considering GPA. Um, if you're ever placed on... Um, academic probation for any reason. It does not impact the partnership program scholarship at all. Um, if at some point you're not able to take a class for whatever reason at Gordon-Conwell, guess what? You don't need the partnership program. So um, that's how that would work. Um, but no, I do not look at GPAs once you are an accepted partnership program student. The only requirements are that you're fulfilling the educational requirements of the partnership program. 
Another question that came in is, can I have two or more churches contribute to my partnership program funding? Yes, of course you can. I have some students that have three churches that contribute. Mm -hmm. um, I have denominations that contribute. I even have a Sunday school class that contributes. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite gift of all time. I mention it in all my trainings because I love seeing $50.60 or um, all different amounts each month. Mm -hmm. So it's the most heartfelt gift that a Sunday school class is contributing to their Sunday school teacher. Mm. So raise the roof. Yes, you can have all that. There's also something called matching gifts. If you know of someone who works for a company who has matching gifts, yes, that can go towards the partnership program as well. Um, again, because it is a tax deductible gift. Um, and then, um, if somebody has like a Fidelity account or um, an account such as that, can they give through that account? Yes, that could be applied towards the partnership program as well. Great, and I did notice there was a question from a little bit earlier oh, okay. in terms of studying full-time as a SimLink student. Could mm -hmm. you be on the partnership program as an online student? Yes, you can. So you can be an online student, on-campus student, half, you know, half each year, however it works for you, um, partnership program works. And the reason being is all the educational components for the partnership program are online. So you can fulfill all of your requirements. So, right. Yeah. Another question related to the, the goal is what if they raise more than their 13700 Can the extra amount of funds go towards books, et cetera? So again, it's full tuition and full tuition only. It cannot go to any other educational expenses. But what does happen, um, the thirteen seven is the minimum goal that you're striving towards. If you've raised... 23,000 in your first year, woohoo, raise the roof. Understanding what that 23 is. Maybe someone gave all three years up front. Knowing that, then naturally year two will be a little smaller, year three will be a smaller. So it's kind of an average, if you will, for lack of better words, of your three years. Mm -hmm. But you must always have active partners um, in the partnership program, even in year three, even if you raised all three years of support. Why is that? Because again, if you're a missionary, understanding that having that stable base always and not telling donors, I need you, I don't need you, I need mm -hmm. you, I don't need you, um, is part of the training. It's important to maintain a consistent base for them as well. Great. And the last question that I've seen is uh, the FAFSA. Is a yes. FAFSA part of the partnership program application? You do not need, you, if you don't need to apply for a FAFSA, you don't have to. No, it has nothing to do with partnership. If, however, you need other funding through the FAFSA, um, then by all means, um, for financial aid reasons, then yes, by all means, apply. So that's a personal decision for you. And I'm happy to walk through that with you, as is the financial aid office, but, but that is a personal individual decision. Right. It's not a requirement. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Great. Um, well, if anyone else has any last minute questions, there's still time for maybe one or two more and feel free to put that in the chat. Uh, Courtney, you've been really patient as we've waded through all of this. Oh. Is there anything else you'd like to share or underscore about what we've commented on um, mm. as we get closer to concluding? I would, if you're on the fence, I would encourage you to give the partnership program a try. Um, talk to Erica, read more about it, think about it, pray about it. Like this is also a, a decision we make in faith, right? It's an opportunity for us to practice our faith muscles. Of, right. Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen. This can only happen with, with your help. And, and the Lord, um, the Lord will provide. And he does. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say, pray about it. Talk to the Lord, talk to your church. Um, and yeah, this is an opportunity for us to, to walk in faith and to, mm -hmm. um, step out of our comfort zone in a lot of ways, but yeah, super good preparation, as they said, for ministry, for, um, for life with the Lord of dependency. <laughs> right. So, Amen. yeah. And our hope and prayer for you is that through programs like the partnership program, you could leave seminary, mm -hmm. hopefully without any additional educational oh, debt. Yes. Um, because that is such a problem in our country right now. And it's something we're very cognizant of. We're constantly trying to raise new donors up who can fund scholarships. Um, but if you, if you are able to graduate with little to no additional debt, that really frees you up to then follow the Lord's calling wherever yeah. he might take you yeah. all over the world. Yeah. So it really is a long-term investment in how God could lead you. 
yeah. and your family, uh, yeah. like Courtney said, by walking in faith. Yeah, so. yeah. That's actually a very valid point. We've done some um, exit interviews with students and questionnaires comparing Gordon-Conwell graduates with Gordon-Conwell Partnership Program graduates, so comparing apples to apples. And statistically, year after year, Partnership Program graduates are graduating less burdened by debt mm. and well-versed in stewardship, mm. where they feel far more confident and comfortable talking about financial matters, not just with their church, but with others. So um, statistically, it, it is working. So, um, so raise the roof to God be all the glory and to no one else, because that's our hope. Because if you are burdened by additional debt, it it defrays you from jumping into ministry. And our hope is that you're able to jump into ministry quicker yeah. so that you can fulfill the call, the call that God has placed upon your heart. So that's our hope. That's our desire. And we're here working with one another. So please, if nothing else, I hope you hear that message that we're here walking with one another mm -hmm. through this entire journey. So, um, yeah. Thanks, Erica. And thank you to everyone who's taken the time to join us. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your interest in Gordon Conwell. And just know as you continue to discern your next steps in God's plan, we're, we're here for you. We want to talk to you by phone, by email. Additionally, I, I wanted to mention, if you haven't come for a campus visit yet and you'd like to do that, mm -hmm. we have visitors most weeks of the year. And we can uh, actually also provide housing on campus for you for up to two nights and transportation to and from the airport or train station. Mm -hmm. So if it would be helpful to you to just come and have some of these conversations in person mm -hmm. and sit in on classes, we'd love to have you come for a visit. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also come to one of our biannual Explore Seminary events, which are uh, open houses that are much more robust. Mm -hmm. And the next one uh, is coming up in October. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to mention that as a plug or if you wanted to come at some point during the summer um, and feel free to reach out to us. Yeah. So any awesome. closing comments, Erica or Courtney? Gordon Conwell's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so it's part of your program. <laughs> Big fan. If you're on the fence, please reach out. Give yeah. us a call. Um, we would be more than happy. The admissions team, they're all wonderful, loving, caring people. They will walk you through. Uh, if you're on the fence about partnership and how to afford seminary, I am more than happy to walk you through any partnership program specific questions. Um, we're here walking with one another. So if nothing else, please hear our heart for that. Um, and just know that you are being lifted up in prayer already even now. Yeah. Great. And as a final comment, we'll send out the full video from the webinar that we just conducted here in a couple of days. So be looking out for that in your email. So thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And we'll be continuing to pray for you mm -hmm. as you prepare for wherever God might be calling you next in your journey in faith. Thanks. Amen. Bye.